guys, Tales of Dram back here again. Uh, we're continuing with the session for Gnome's Home, which is the unanimously decided name for the group, you know, of Brawl, Zeus, Tachussi, and uh, Dog. Chicken. And set a car. And set a car. <laughs> Are we uh, in the spot, by the way? Break it. It's a good. Uh, we should save that. He's gonna like slowly turn to uh to face the gnome, and just like staring at him slowly pull out a long knife. Oh, okay. No, you don't get a rope then. Fine. Carry well, rope. Want a rope. Who? Yeah. Yeah, you cut one. All right. Well, uh, I'm gonna do a silly little thing with shape, shape water and make it wet, and then immediately remove all of the moisture at once to try and actually damage the quality of the rope where I'm cutting it, and then cut it. Just to be a dick. Okay. You do so. You see, it gets wet and it starts to go frothy, and then uh, you remove all the water immediately, and it hardens. I'm gonna see if the rope sustains. Nope. I rolled a three on the D100. <laughs> uh, so the rope, as you go to cut it, as you just want it, it immediately just all falls apart. Oh, Caps it fucking rope. shatters. I cast Get shatter it. on the rope. Can't even withstand a singular thing of water. Uh, ah. the, one on the, on the one around his feet, as well as you go to cut it, it falls apart as well. Hmm. Terrible rope. I'm glad you didn't let, not listen to me. Yes, I am very, very observant when it comes to rope. I can, I can spot that rope from a mile away. See, my, my family didn't specialize in ropes, personally, and I go into like a long, detailed history about my family. <laughs> As, As, I'm going to pull up my wand case, pull out the um, continual flame wand, and just fucking hold that shit up like a flare. Honestly, I'm just sitting next to him, waiting, and I and am hovering around the double. And see, then Uncle Ben invested in this one company. Okay, at this point, as you're holding it up, and this blue flame starts to echo through the misty, mithril sea on the very edge of the coast. Well, out of character, I rolled a natural one for both the boat and then an eight for the guards to see this. So no one saw it. <laughs> oh, so literally no one fucking saw it. All right, cool. All right. All right, well. Can, can I start, like, fucking waving it around? Sure, make a performance check for me. Cast, like, fucking levitate on it and just start making it go up and down really fast. Sure, make a performance check with advantage for me. Okay, see? well. And, and then, like, a long, long time ago, my great, great, great aunt. What the fuck? All right, 16. See, All right. she... After a few more minutes of Mitty's retarded stories, um, you suddenly see a lantern light flash on the ocean. Jesus. It's starting to approach you, but you also see a porch light approaching you from the city. Oh. Seems like I might have to pick the story up a later time. <laughs> or never, preferably. The light in the ocean is about... You're not 100% sure of the distance, but probably about 300, 500 feet out from the edge of the beach. Uh, no, right. While the sounds of footsteps are above you on the catwalk looking down. 
and as you guys turn around, you see several guards, about seven of them, in this ordained uh, half-plate armor with these tabards on uh, that seem to be uh, a serpent around a mountainous spire, which is different than the religious order here, because the city is the Golden City. It still worships uh, Shubaroth, but it is called Oradon, the Golden City. Um, and as they all look down, you see all of them start, all seven, or well, six of them grab heavy crossbows and begin to aim at your group as another one, uh, Alexander Stormpaw, standing at his full height in full battle-ready armor, begins to walk up to the edge, grabbing at his large bastard sword on his back. He looks down. Are you fucking kidding me? Good evening. Good evening. Hello. I thought I told you all to wait in my room. <laughs> well, we are waiting, just not where you wanted us to. Listen. I do not know yes. what you wish for here, why you came here. But, I wish to speak with you. There are many no, objects to this place that I need dealt with. That I cannot deal with myself. I was here to offer you work. If you would like to forgo that, <laughs> uh, we can get into a little spar here. Oh, I don't want to hurt. Unfortunately, I came to this place for his very large and boisterous port. Just because you happen to close it doesn't mean I can simply. Abandon my goals, stay here until I've earned enough favor with you to finally have a ship to where I'm off to. There is not near enough time. Understood. Roll me a persuasion check. Oh boy, I really should, you know, maybe get a little charisma. Fucking okay, natural 20 for a 19. We I'm have. Just trying to get back home. If you could write that in a bit nicer way on the manuscript, then yeah. If I might raise this, surely something as simple as smuggling warrants our arrest and not our, well, deaths. And even then, such things should be carried out in proper executions. Yes. As I was about to get to say, if you all really wish to go against us in the law, I have not no liberty to kill you here. Since this would be more of a smuggling issue, it would be up to the master of guilds and be a good bearer. But seeing as she is not present at the moment and dealing with other matters, I can let this slide for now. Just know, your faces are all no well, aside from you and you. And he points to the two figures wearing cloaks. Aside from those two, well, I mean, you're pretty you much right? But the other one. Everyone else's face is known. So I want you to Everyone know, else's face is known. If you come back here, you will be coming back as known criminals. <laughs> as if we intend to come back. He looks over to Sedekar, and you. I know you, Sedekar. Your family is going to be very disappointed in you when they find out you're a criminal. Sedekar looks up and goes, Well. Looks like I'll have to become a hero too. <laughs> that way you can't just arrest me. Alexander, everyone roll me a charisma check. This is going to be a this is going to be a DC based upon adding all of your scores up, just so you're aware. Alright. Well, uh, I'm I'm not taking away from anything, but I'm not doing much either. Rolf, you're gonna have advantage on this because you rolled natural Oh fuck yeah. I got sixteen. Okay, 16. 19. 19, 16, 16. Not bad roll. 53. Damn, that's higher than... Your DC was 30. <laughs> so, as you do this, he looks you all over, and as the wind begins to pour in, as the small yellow lights, the golden lights of the flames, the many different watchtowers, begins to backlight this man as he stares down at you with his... Uh, shaved hair. He got blows. He looks at you. He 
Beach. I wish you good travels and luck amongst the mythical sea. And should mm. you decide to come back, I may have a job for a criminal such as yourself. Mm. We'll see. Ironic, isn't it, man? Yes. Well. A manager's status. Asking for the darkest people. I wouldn't consider myself that dark, jeez. I'm a... I'm a generally pretty good person. No. You're a generally bigger person? No. <laughs> I, actually, okay, I'm gonna change it. Generally, I try to be the bigger man. I run. <laughs> well... Do I, make, do I make the joke, or would you rather make the joke, Rebel? The joke makes itself. What I'm joke? I don't, I don't... I don't get it. Crossbow's up! And you see them all hold their crossbows up as at this point you hear the waves crash as the boat lands upon the sands. <laughs> you hear, oh. Well, fuck! I didn't expect we'll any company, Roll. Hmm. We didn't plan on it. I wasn't talking to you, they are lady. Friends. Nothing to worry about. You're what? <laughs> They're nothing more. Um. Oh, trust me, it's fine. Does the I... word accomplice... No, wait, that's the wrong word. Um, does the word acquaintance fix the situation? I'm going to silence you. <laughs> As you see Please. this, uh, this one-masted sloop type of ship, uh, a bit bigger than a sloop, so a bit bigger, but it has one mast on it. Uh, this red and dark brown wood coats the entire ship. It has this small kind of triangular dome-shaped uh, back where you can, uh, uh, I'm stupid, no. Yeah, no, it does have a triangular dome-shaped backing with a, uh, which goes down into the inside, and you can see just the top, there's a small balcony that coasts around the dome itself where the steering wheel is. Um, you can see that the ship's head piece, its mounted piece, is a sea serpent of, uh, beautiful red grills upon it and different uh, designs. You can see its sharp teeth point out and it almost looks alive to you guys, like moving its eyes glow a red color. Um, and you can see many different lanterns hung upon the ship of red flame. At this point, looking down to you, Raw, Wayland Blackwater goes, Well, if you've been uh, given permission by the High Constable, or he's not attacking you at least, we should probably get out of here while we have the chance. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. He's going to turn to his two, well, not two, four, yeah, comrades, and kind of usher them in the direction of the ship. Alright, it's going to be Uh, you get a high possible go. Well, this is a eventful day, and they begin to walk off. If ever I'm need of diplomatic immunity, you'll hear from me again. I believe it was established that we have been on the ship and okay, I've been oh, sailing for a while. I am, I am, I am. just starting to get away from right. into the fog of the Mithril Sea. Oh, okay. We're yeah. like 30 minutes to an hour off, offshore. We're, we're, we're oh, oh, oh goddamn, okay. Minutes at most. All right. Sorry, then I changed, I changed my dumb statement to probably sit on the ship and wait. <laughs> what we do is we survive. This is the Mithril Sea. Littered with monsters and horrors deep below the waves. Can I throw him overboard, please? Hmm. Monsters sound fun. You hear Waylon go, I would not recommend it, my friends. After all, this is the Mithril Sea, and feeding the beast just makes them hungrier. Hmm. I, 
person. I don't Perhaps think his come. little machine, it thrashes like a living creature, and they may struggle with it in their teeth for a time. Oh, no, hey, no, 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 no. Well, we wouldn't even sacrifice your magical battery-esque item. Mm, I'm I was thinking more him, not his puppy. You are too quick to murder. Suffering is perhaps a bit more fitting. In either case, it shouldn't come down to it. I have purchased an item which should allow us easy escape. Go on. I would prefer to keep it private for the time. I do respect privacy. That is part of my entire, well, my entire past career. Wouldn't you be against privacy since you kind of enter people's brains a lot? I can make your life a living hell. Do not tempt me. I assume a lot of people can do that. That's why I'm yeah. very scared all the time. Most of my kind can. Anyway. I, I don't believe flexing our muscles is truly it's the best way to flex. interact with the small thing. Not a flex. Intimidation. That's precisely what I mean. Well, you may be bickering, but if you want to look off the sides of the ships, you'll see some of the more peaceful denizens of the sea. They usually don't get this close to shore. You're lucky. And does anybody look off the sides of the ship? Oh, hell yeah, I'm looking. Sure. Why not? As you look off the sides of the ship, uh, you see a few crewmates also looking off, uh, a few random dock workers that were pulled along, uh, but as you look off the side of the ship, you see the fog starts to slowly dissipate the further into the sea you get. And as you get further in, you see these gigantic whales made of fog and water that seem to be swimming through the air, seemingly diving into the water and then jumping out again, reaching before landing into the fog clouds and veering off path, disappearing. Ow. Mm. Those are called the uh, Misty Whales. Uh, don't know their origins. Par some people call them elementals. I don't know what the fuck they are, but they are peaceful on this relentless sea. So if you seem find one, don't attack it. Beautiful. Let's say we were to be attacked by one. What then? I have a tube. Pray to whatever gods you ha you pray to. A tube. I Are pray to the tube. Close. What'd you say? Oh, I was giving other suggestions to do if the whale attacks. The ship rocks as it hits a rough patch of sea for a second, and water sprays onto the ship. Uh, the whales! Sprays <laughs> upwards. You see the white, blue, and red moons that are in a strange position in the sky. Unlike usually where like one's in the sky and the other two are like behind it or like dimmed, all three are starting to shine a bit more brighter in their strange ways, and you can see that they're positioned at different altitudes than each other. That they, you can almost cannot track be them slowly moving. And as they do, you look as the water sprays across your face, and you can see a mithril-like color to the ocean water itself. Well, I'm gonna bring the massive over and show like and touch its like back and go look look at that look how cool that is Call me old-fashioned I do not like the sight of a astral body moving unusually This fast at all times Nothing we can do about it. It's gonna keep moving without our outfits gonna listen to us It is entirely natural Amongst the most natural things, in fact. Your astral bodies move this oddly? No, the astral body is moving a bit weirdly, but you know the reason for it with the upcoming solstice. To an extent, not heavily, but you know there's an upcoming solstice that will affect the three moons, at least. My friend, the most rudimentary of your laws of reality are amongst the most unnatural perversions of what the world truly is. Not just the world, I suppose, the universe. Bro, as you look up, you do see these 
strange celestial clouds in space. Uh, Aurora Borealises are also moving across the sky at different positions. They, they usually don't show this easily. As they're moving around, you realize uh, this is the cosmic energies, the magical energies, the energies of different parts of creation starting to weave themselves into existence with the upcoming soul. Those. We had those on my home. They came around every, mm, give or take nine months. Mm. Uh, occasionally with the birth of an important young one. Well, Are they common here? In some places. But for now, this means something much different from what you know. I'm gonna pet the Mastiff and go, Well, it doesn't seem dangerous. <laughs> oh, it's far awesome. from dangerous. Enlighten me. It soon approaches. Faster than I'd like. What? The greatest solstice. An eclipse which eclipses eclipses. The universe itself. More than just the stars and the astral bodies, the planes will align in such a way that everything, everything will be connected. The, the perfect moment. The universe about to take a screenshot. Is... I don't think that uh, I've ever heard That is because you are so far from the center. When at the edge of the shield, one can fairly, well, yeah. rarely see the center. And this planet or galaxy is near the center? <laughs> My Do friend. You know Last time I checked, yes. What if the center was constantly moving? And it simply well, lines up here temporarily. Well, that would not change anything I've said. No, but it is something to toil over. Well, given how far outside that potentiality might be to my own lifetime, I must admit, I'm not terribly sure I care. I do understand, but hmm. tell me, where do you think, how far away from here do you think I could be from? I feel Millions as if of I was, miles. Oh shit. Feels as if I was dunked into the deep, deep depths and resurfaced somewhere entirely new. Like I went in a desert. And came out in a lush green forest. Well, consider it your oasis then. Do you practice magic from where you come from? Some people. It's mm. reserved for more of the uh, higher ranking beings. It's not totally uncommon for commoners to practice it, but no one has a great interest. We Revel in the naturality of the world. <laughs> Is that how you um, see magic? A perversion? No, it's simply... Some people, myself not included, find it to... They compare it to going into the ice with a piece of paper. And then hoping something is drawn on it when you pull it back out. Others see it as an acorn going into the ice, hoping it hatches. And sometimes it does, mostly it does not. But all around, we are still not as quite knowledgeable, shall we say. They are far from just unknowledgeable, they are ignorant. More than ignorant. The heart of magic is change. To change the state of how things are currently. 
to cause a great eruption of fire to appear out of thin air, to cause a base metal to change into something glorious, to cause a lump of stone to animate and serve you to change dead to living. Change I... is the truest state of everything. The boat um, is saying, as he's saying this, water spraying up behind him as the wind is pushing his cloak in a billowing motion. I understand you guys' love for interest in magic, but you must also respect or more acknowledge that you guys have this need for it, this constant hunger and I would not say worship, but this constant feed and want of knowledge of magic and need for constantly improving one. Our planet, my home, my place of birth, we have no need, really. Because we know that it never really ends well. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. Magic has amazing possibilities. It has so much to be done, so much that could be done. But, quite frankly, I would not say that everyone wants it. We are still reveling and still are enjoying the naturality and the naturalness of our home. One day we will adventure deeper into magic, but for right now, we are happy guarding the entrance, shall we say. I have never heard of a place more steeped in ignorance. The furthering of knowledge, of skill, that is all living is for. What you call ignorance, we call... how we say? We call caution, and I do understand those are one the same, but... <laughs> you understand little from what I've heard. Caution and ignorance are scarcely one in the same. Caution is the prevention of mishap. Ignorance is choosing a path in which you lay in, well, ignorance is a lacking of courage. In fact, I think lacking is a fitting word. You keep comparing, well, the absence of magical practice as natural and deny it whenever I am pointing out you call magic unnatural. No, I fully understand magic is natural. Don't get me wrong about that. My wording is not great, but I do understand magic is natural. It's one of the things the universe is. One would think a being that communicates and thoughts would be able to articulate that. I not believe there language. is something deeper seated. Not, not your language. language. Not my words. Do you communicate purely in language? I have met with psychics before. Language, thoughts, emotions, feeling, hmm. and quite frankly, I would say astral is not the wrong word. I have what communicated means? with psychics before. I know of what you speak, and that is exactly what I'm pointing out. If so, you wish to commune to me the fullness of your understanding. Why not commune to me your understanding? Why bother with simple linguistics? You have that power, and that power seems natural to your people. You choose not to. You are correct and... at one point. I do, have, I do have something I am hiding. Something I do not wish to speak of. But, all I can say for the moment, we do have capabilities more than ready. No offense, but most likely have more natural born abilities toward magic than your kind, but we chose not to use it. And that, what I heard. that is exactly I what I'm against. I ask you, let me speak. That is the heart of ignorance. In affinity. In affinity which in which I find myself stunted. So the way I see it is currently you see me 
taking what you call ignorance, or you call, well, I call caution, and you don't have enough experience with of us taking this caution to not use it for a purpose of we did use it once and to not end well for everyone. Because one everyone example, one fool does not define a power that defines an individual who did not know with what they were toying with. When that one fool causes the genocide of your race, you tend not to use it. <laughs> that. That one fool began everything that caused me to be here. Quite frankly, it's... how do I say? Quite frankly, that one fool was someone who knew how to properly use it and knew how to use it in the wrong ways. And I understand magic is used for good in your kind, also for evil in your kind. But quite frankly, we are not ready, shall I say. Well, we were, but that one fool caused us to under be. Now, hear me. You, your kind, has used it for, I'm not going to say longer or shorter, possi possibly longer, possibly shorter. I am still slightly unaware of your entire past, of your planet and whatnot. But quite frankly, we had that natural born gift. We had that natural born ability and it did not go well. We don't use it. So call us insane for not wanting to use it anymore. Or taking a, shall we say, indetermined break from it. Until you have articulated your away. point in several different ways. I do not understand why you continue. To get it through. Make sure the message is heard. Because all I hear currently is you coming back at me, not hearing what I've said. You call us ignorant, yet our because ignorance you. is what's keeping us safe. It's not ignorance, it's caution. Well then, call us. allow me to spell out for you precisely what is happening to you and your people. One individual uses a great deal of power to do a terrible thing. But that is simply the nature of power. That is how it has been. That is how it always will be. If you cannot manage that power, I'm afraid you're not only ignorant, you're incapable. Some among you are born strong, and if you do not nurture them, then you'll never get anywhere. The simple fact is anyone can lift a sword. Anyone can kill another. That is an inherent power, and it is done every day, a thousand times over, across even a single city, in some cases. Just because the scale is greater does not change the principle. I understand that your people are shrouded in fear. But that is precisely the problem. You refuse to move forward. You look only at the horrors, and yes, you have endured much. But you still live. That is the simple fact. You all have a gift, and you refuse to use it, because you are scared. I do not care how many have died. If one ignores their potential, the perfection waiting in their soul, then, well, they're scarcely a person. You are correct. I give you that. We are scared. We are looking at the horrors behind us. And you are correct. We are terrified of moving on. We are terrified still. People are trying their best. And I do hope we move on and are able to be better with magic and use that gift. But. All I, all I can think of currently is I do not know when we will move on because I not know who has to start the moving on. It's at this point, Wayland, uh...
reaches up and taps both of you on the shoulders, uh, holding uh, a bottle of wine, and goes, "What well, I think he's trying to say here, well, to my knowledge, anyways, because I'm not the smartest, is you can't move forward while always looking back." Now, Sorry. tell about we have some alcohol. You all seem to be on edge. And he brings out a wine uh, bottle and goes, Anyone? I'm going to sleep. Of course, you're really in the tough. little deck. Um, let me see, who did I get here? Uh, this is DM talking, by the way, because I'm trying not to lose his voice. Uh, who did I get for the ship here? He, he would have gotten, because he got pretty high. Uh... Oh, uh, yeah, you're gonna want to talk to Rorik, and he points over towards a man standing at the, uh, entrance to the small dome that leads downwards, and he goes, uh, that guy right there, and you see this, uh, six-eight hulking figure, a half-orc, muscular beard, uh, oh, sorry, muscular build, not beard, uh, <laughs> it's muscular in, beard. in the nighttime, uh, though it is very rough to see with the nighttime, uh, lights, uh, it is a deep shade of green with a rough and scaly kind of texture. Uh, his uh, jet black hair is tied into a thick braid, and he has tribal, tribal tattoos adorning his broad arms and chest. Uh, as you look over him, he, uh, he goes, Rourke here is our quartermaster, funny enough. Uh, also the muscle of the group, uh, but we can all handle ourselves from time to time. Uh, I'll be drinking on deck if you need me. Uh, the ship should be good for it by itself for a little bit. Uh, if we need, if we need your help, we'll call down below deck. Um, there are a few other individuals on the deck of the ship. Uh, you probably might meet them on your own. If so, say hi. Try not to pry too much into their business unless you want them prying into yours. Anyways, I'm a drink. Mitty, you want something to drink? Ah, uh, you know, sure. All right, I got some fine wine from. Strumbling, actually, funny enough, and he starts to walk up to you. Uh, as he walks up to you, and Rawl begins to... Well, if you guys would like to finish your roleplay here, as you guys are starting to walk away from each other. If there was anything else you'd like to say to each other. Rawl. What? One more thing. <laughs> I fucked your mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, continue, sorry. I hear you. And I do hope we move on. And I only hope for your species to flourish fighting. You have much potential. Please, <laughs> do use it. You needn't worry about my people. You could say I have a handle on it. I'm glad to hear. Now rest. Rest oh, well. Billows and furls his cloak as he starts to step away a bit towards the hulking half-orc who goes, Hey there! Yep, this is his voice now! Let me show you to your room! His fucking balls were- His fucking balls, like, went back in. Inside of him, mid-fucking talk. <laughs> nah, I'm just fucking with you, he goes, Let me show you to your room. Let me show you to your room. There's gonna be time to know, Dick, a little bit. You're not gonna get the top side, I guess, you know. Uh, could have yeah. scrapped his corners, but- and he begins to show you down below deck crawl. It's a nice small cabin that's more rounded at the edge. All right. Now uh, he's going to lay himself down. Fucking lay his valuables. Um, still within arm's reach, of course. And pass the fuck out. With that, um, I may have to uh, slip out. No problem. I, I figured that's why I was getting close to ending it. Uh, anyways, if you wanna, if you wanna keep listening, you can. If you don't, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I was just yeah. kind of a setting ending after a bit of roleplay with Mitty. All right. Well, um, I have an essay to do, and I've already carved out a lot of time for this. Oh shit! So do I. Whatever. I'll do it later. Well, you have a good day, Roll. All right. You too. Anyway, so, mm. Mitty. Yes. As the captain comes walking up to you, he starts to pour this large cup of wine. He goes. Oh shit, you're small, uh. And he pulls up a small bowl and fills it for you. Well, yeah, here, ah, use this. Much better. So, where are you coming from? I think they called you Mitty. Oh, oh, um, yes. Lady, you want some wine too? Some Strumbling. Uh, and a small bit, please. Has a sweet taste to it. Small bit. Grapes. Anyways, come sit down. 
So, where are you going from? Uh, out of town, shall I say. I was kind of born everywhere, really. Grew up going everywhere. Ah, same with me and my brother, actually. Oh, oh really? What about you, Mitty? You don't look like you're from around these parts. Your skin's too, uh, should I say, olive -y tanned? Uh, the angelic ah. aliens are too cold for that stuff. I'm from the floating isles of Dragon Rock, I believe. Dragon Draconia. something. Draconia. 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 Yeah. Draconia. Oh, Draconia. I've only heard tales of that. Uh, it's, it's a flying island, right? With all the dragons and dragon people that walk around. Yes, it's beautiful. Oh, I've always wanted to go there, but, you know, I'm kind of anchored down here now since I got I got to keep care of this ship and uh, a few other people. Let's see. You could make it a flying ship and then skip the ocean altogether. See, then you could come. I would, but the ship here is not truly built to last like that. I have to make major modifications. I don't got the money or time for that at the moment. Ah. Well, if I ever see you uh, after whatever I'm done doing, um, and if I have the funds, I'd yeah. offer. If you would like to become a benefactor of this ship, I would not mind. Though I gotta say, you'll be becoming a benefactor of a ship that doesn't care about laws. Well, we kind of need a wild card from at home right now. <laughs> True. If everything goes normally, as always, you know, evil will usually prevail. But, that's just my take on things. So, oh. man, he looks, man. he looks at the both of you. So, how do you know that Rawl fella? He didn't really mention y'all. He just said he had some individuals he was traveling with. But you seem not to be on the right foot with everyone. Ah, well, personally... He's talking to both of you, by the way. <laughs> well... You can I... me off. <laughs> yeah, I know. I met him uh, a few years ago. On the day... How long ago? <laughs> Earlier today. I... Earlier, yeah. Well, I met him uh, earlier today, maybe. Well, yeah, yeah roughly. Man, you I met was... a man earlier today, and you're just sailing off into the Mithril Sea with him to go to an unknown island. Oh, well, of course. Call me, call me crazy. I tend yeah. to trust my gut. You're crazy. My instinct has never, my instinct has never gone wrong. That's not, that's and... not crazy guts. Uh, you should always trust your gut feelings. That's good. Man, real quick, um, how, mm, what is your take on non-humans, or non or non-humanoids? You mean like, uh... Like monsters. Well, humanoid is a type of creature that has at least arms, legs, and a head, and stands upright, bipedal, or maybe quadrupedal like a centaur or whatnot, but they look... To have the shape of a human. So, a minotaur, though it has some changes to it and considered a monstrosity, I consider it still a humanoid, in my opinion. I count on my limbs when he says this. <laughs> so, um, are you good with secrets and whatnot? I assume you are. Yeah, I'm your parent. Yeah, I am. I hope I don't regret this, but this cloak has become dreadfully wet and very uncomfortable to wear and must suffocate me. Oh, well, I trust you to not... Uh, I trust not to go too upset, but whatever. <clears throat> As I say this, the cloak is fucking... The hood basically comes off. Head just entirely fucking exposed. And I just keep fucking looking at him. Uh. Uh. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm not quite. No. Humanoid is a strong word. I, I don't judge. You have, to my knowledge, arms, legs, and a body. You look humanoid, though you don't have eyes. I don't know how you. You know what? You're paying me to ship you somewhere. <laughs> I don't care as long as you don't endanger me or my crew. Uh, as I say this, all four tendrils kind of like a layup by on the table and just kind of. Well, 
Well, there's no table. You guys are just sitting on the deck. You guys well, just all four just come, come, come into view. We're off of the cloak. That's a bit different. Um. Yes. Now, I also had to ask because eating is difficult when I have the cloak on. Or drinking, to be exact. Okay. If you would not mind. As I say this, one of the tendrils slips into whatever. Slips into the cup of wine and just takes a nice sip. That's I'm a secondary. I'm be honest with you. I understand. It's I'm gonna leave you to do it, and he stands up and begins to walk back towards the captain's <laughs> post. <laughs> just, just, well, fuck this shit. That's that's weird. I'm leaving. I, I sit, I sit down, leaning against my steel defender. You, you scared him with your ugliness again. Why do you keep doing that? You really should not taunt me when I'm alone with you. When there's an the ocean, ocean right there. Quit calling me ugly. Speaking of the ocean, the ship is hit with the uh, uh, waves. I need both of you to make uh, strength checks. Strength checks? Saves, oh. sorry, saves. Oh, nat 20 anyways. <laughs> 19. 19. You both managed to hold your own as the ship jostles quite a bit. Well, I'm not ugly. I am simply not from here. You have to admit, compared to a lot of other creatures here, your differences you make you... are extremely ugly compared to my kind. Well, I don't see a lot of your kind around here, so the average is kind of skewed against your favor. The average is in one's mind, and quite frankly, my average is telling me you are at best a 2 out of 10. I will say this. His mind is very cluttered uh, and filled with other shit, so... Twenty percent is not that bad. You know, that's a that's a high margin in um artifices. If your creation I, works twenty percent of the time, you did a good job. You don't understand. I'm rating you out of an animal. Out of animal. Viking wise, you're not even on the scale. Well, animal wise, you're two out of ten at best. Understand, to my view, currently, you're more of an animal than a living being. Looks wise. You guys is see the a lack... few shooting stars in the sky racing across it, leaving this trail that almost looks like a spider web that eventually pushes out. Is and... it the lack of tentacles that causes that, or...? Yes. Oh. Also, your stature is different. Also, you're... just all around... Animalistic, I'd say. The lack of grooming, the random hair, the skin type, the unableness to be able to cloak yourself and have a carapace such as I. Well, we you kind of. Me, you remind me very, very thoroughly of a creature we have on my home planet. Oh, sounds fun. Doggaroos. Mm. They sound cute, don't they? They do sound cute. They are the most ugly creature possible on our planet for me. They do nothing but roll around in their own feces, reproduce, piss everywhere, and do their best to fuck everything they see. All while doing it, barely able to think. Sounds... That's an instinct, not sentience. Sounds efficient. Like a piece of machinery that's built exactly how it should be. They're Thank you. Pest. I'll both of you to roll me con saves. Dirty 20. I love 18s. Uh, uh, 21. You both aren't drunk yet from this very sweet tasting. You're starting to drink and you're realizing the wine, it's not going to get you drunk specifically. The DC for this was only 12. Uh, the wine from Strumlin, uh, it is made for taste. That's nice. Get you drunk, but it takes a lot of fancy. Not as much for halflings because they're half the size. Actually, you no, know, so roll it again. And what? what the lower number was. Twenty. With the twenty-one. Oh, okay, that's still fine. Uh, seventeen. Okay, yeah, you're still fine, but you can feel <laughs> that. You can feel that. No, I'm not. Shorter creatures. See, 
the most efficient creatures here on this planet are parasites. Sacrificing everything they have just you to the thing. You yourself to a parasite, something that's widely renowned as a pest, a problem, if anything, a nuisance that should be exterminated. Well, they're, they're perfect. At least in biological terms. So you'd rather be on instinct than sentience. What's... Well, personally, I like my intelligence. I would never want to become a parasite. But being compared to one, their hardiness, their intuitiveness, and their I'm ability sure to thrive. It's not a compliment by any means. Ah, I'll take it as such. You really shouldn't. It, it's like a, it's an old um, gnomish proverb. It's take all insult, take insult as compliment as they try to bring you down. <laughs> this is not trying to bring you down. This is purely relevance. Uh, Tell me. You say that. <laughs> Tell me this. How do you think our kind use your response to pests? Well, as all kinds should. They should try to eradicate them, because they put monkey wrenches into our beautiful machinery, our biology. You are entirely correct, for once. Now, tell me, what, what do you think me, someone who is new to this place and this world, would do when I see what I deem a parasite? Would I, would I try and play along? Would I take a chance and see if it would kill me first? Or would I do the smart thing and eradicate it immediately? Hmm. Well, it depends on what your morality is. Because I personally, if I arrived in a whole new world, and I was sat down and I saw something gross, I personally wouldn't kill it because that could disrupt the natural balance and order of the place. Like killing wolves to protect the deer, and then the deer to grow too much, and then the plants die. I do see some of your thought process, because there is not necessary evil in the ecosystem, but when you arrive on a planet, not, not sure of anything, still learning what everything there can to be on this, this rock, you don't take chances. And quite frankly, I've been taking many chances with you. And see you where that got almost, you. Almost caught, chased by... Put the entire town on alert. I had to convince someone that I was a god and that they were being chosen for their apostle. Had to have a conversation with someone. I'm on a boat now, something I don't trust. I am oh. staring into the skies, hoping to see my home, hoping for the best, As being reminded that I am a walking into the sky, You see this strange flash of bismuth color in the sky. What? That almost blinds you for a second. Hmm, what the fuck? What? Disappear. Did you see that? You see this mm. large meteoric... ...comet. ...in the ocean a few miles off. See what? Oh! Well, I see it now. At this point, as you speak to each other on the deck of the ship, eventually finding rest after your argument ends, as neither of you see the other person's side too well, our view shifts outwards under the beautiful starry scape of this pre-solstice sky on this mithril sea. The ocean beckons danger. Danger answers. As in the distance, we see a small island, and upon it, ships around the fortification. You see individuals crawling up nets, having these large swords in their teeth and these bandanas that cover their heads as they look up towards the skies and see a flash of bismuth and a falling comet as their eyes trace. They see in the distance but one item. A small ship. As we hear the hooting and hollering of individuals speaking a language we cannot understand. The individuals start to scurry faster as multiple ships begin to drop their sails and head off 
as a single flag is placed upon the top of one of the commanding ships. Three ships that go out. What seems to be an elven head in the shape of a skull. As you see multiple darkened gray skinned drows, the elves, and other creatures upon these mighty large black and gray vessels begin to give chase to our party. That is where we're going to end the session.